Welcome to the hottest real estate topics on the planet, keeping you up to date with all the creative ways to buy and sell real estate without bank qualifying, so anyone can build real income starting today. Here is another great show with Dealmaker Bill and Pete the Rookie. All right, here we are, another episode. <clears throat> another episode of Flipping Houses for Rookies. All right. And I'm Bill the Dealmaker. I'm Pete the Rookie. And we have Nameless Naomi. Well, Nameless. somebody pitched a name last night at yeah. a meeting. Yeah, I don't like it. Do you? Okay. I don't like it either. Nope, that's gone. Yeah. I'm not even going to say it. Said, well, I was going to say it. Go ahead. <laughs> Naomi the face, because she's <laughs> the face of the, the offers. I don't like it. Naomi um, the voice. Yeah. <laughs> They don't see you. Don't, we, we still got to keep working on it. Yeah, it, it'll it'll organically come about. You might not like it, but it'll come about. <laughs> you know oh, I think say? I'll like it. Huh? I think I'll like it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what they say about well, what we talked about last night? We were in the meetup last night. We were talking about how how you get nicknames, and I was listening to it one time on the radio about how mob names become nicknames because mm -hmm. that's really the big ones. You know, like yeah. Louis the Left Hawk. Yeah. You know what I mean? And. Huh. Huh. One eyed Jack. You know what I mean? It's like none of it sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> none of it sounds good. Not a it's good reason. It's for a reason. Yeah. Uh -huh. They're one, very violent. Yeah. One shot wrong. You know, or something like that. <laughs> so All if right. I knock somebody out in one shot, then maybe I can get exactly. Like, Sammy the stoolie. <laughs> the stoolie. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Not a good one. Not a good one. Move. Move to New <laughs> City quick. <laughs> All right. So we're on episode number seventy-three, Peter and Naomi. And we're going to call this episode, oh, I forgot to tell Emma the name of the episode so she can type it in. You want you want the name of the episode, Emma? We'd like the name of the episode, Bill. How about you, Naomi? Huh? Sorry. I don't know. I'm nameless. The episode can stay nameless. Yeah. We, we're in good company. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. How to turn deal structuring into offers that get accepted. Oh, yeah. From this, from this deal structure to the actual offer. Yeah. Good one. What a skill. Yeah. So how to turn deal structuring into offers that get accepted. Yeah, that sounds like a practical approach. Mm. Practical? Well, yeah, you talk about deal structures, and you go, okay, I understand how the math works. How do I explain that to the customer? Right. How right. do I explain that to the house owner? Like your Plainville deal, <clears throat> starting at 280000 worked to 170000 how, how did that happen? Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I was thrown back a, bit, a little bit by that. Huh? I had to really slow it down last night, didn't I? Well, you, some of the questions, I'm not sure they're asking you what they were really having problems. I think they might have been having problems like one or two steps before where you were. Yeah. They weren't saying what they really, I don't get it, you know, it, what it, you know, where, anyways. But you just keep talking. Well, to catch our listeners up, we did a live meetup last night. We do one every third week of the month. And uh, it was interesting because I was doing deals. To, one of the guys asked that I talk about my deals. He likes when I talk about my deals. <clears throat> so uh, if you – actually, let's put it out there. Mm -hmm. If you guys think that I should talk more about my deals, send me a support ticket, info at flippinghouses.club, info at flippinghouses.club, which, by the way, we always get going in the show. I'm going to do this today because I always forget to do this. I, I would really appreciate – we're on show number 73, and the one thing that I know because I get a lot of support tickets mm -hmm. is people tell us that our information is real and we give a lot of it, mm -hmm. right? So uh, obviously it's free because it's a podcast and we give a lot of free information. We actually have people doing deals just based on the podcast, okay? Usually one or two people a month will send me an, a support ticket saying they got this deal and mm -hmm. they found this deal and they got that deal mm -hmm. and you know and all that kind of stuff. So uh, what I would like is I would like for our audience to get in exchange with us, okay, because we keep giving them all this free stuff, right? So how do we do that? What are we getting out of this? Not even donuts. Right, not even donuts. It's <laughs> a hard life. All I, get, all I get is water. If you come a little earlier, you can have breakfast this morning. We had bacon and eggs oh, no. and oh, man. home fries all no, made no, by I, moi. A, you give me lunch too much as it is. We're going to have lunch today. <laughs> today we're having chicken. Except for Naomi. I don't think Naomi eats chicken. Do you eat she, chicken? She you eats know, baby in, chickens. Intuitively, in the, in the I brought my own lunch. Oh, just good. Just in case. Oh, good. Yeah. I made, I made yeah, well, anyways. What? So, <clears throat> where were we? Oh, so. <laughs> we're trying to do a podcast so here, easily, <laughs> So easily we go off Distracted. track. Distracted. Well, yeah. can, can, so can we get the recipe for that? Food, food can be <clears throat> if I don't have. If I don't write things down, we definitely would end up with a podcast from, like nothing. Um, <clears throat> talking about what we do all day long. 
So you're which is about a reality TV show. <laughs> yeah. So I would like for people to go to flippinghouses.club forward slash podcast and give us a review on iTunes. Uh, or whatever whatever platform you use. What are some of the what are some of the other the platforms? And Google, Google Play. What else? Stitcher. Stitcher. Yeah, and wherever you're using Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes. I prefer iTunes. If you can go give us uh, a review on iTunes, I think when I checked the other day, we were number three in iTunes under education. Okay, which uh, really helps us a lot. You know, so we're number three in iTunes under education. But that helps other people too, doesn't it? <clears throat> if someone's looking for right. something to see three, well, that must be good. So they'll find us. We can help them with the uh, mm -hmm. information that they need. Right. Mm -hmm. um, or if we're not doing something right, you give us a bad review, which I don't want, but at least we know what's going on. We can fix well, it. We have suggestions. Right. Yeah. Or maybe message us personally <laughs> yeah, I'd rather through you, our Facebook page. I'd rather you, yeah, either go to Facebook and message us or uh, just go to um, Flipping Houses, info at flippinghouses.club. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, Naomi just talked about Facebook. We have a whole presence on Facebook. You can go to Facebook uh, dot com forward slash Flipping Houses for Rookies. Um, this podcast is actually uh, live streamed there when we do it uh, on the actual day that we're like right now we're live streaming on 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 Facebook. Uh, there's not much to see, just the three of us. Uh, Naomi's the prettiest of all of us, uh, or be between you and I, Pete. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> boing. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, there's not really much to see. We just have a couple signs behind us, and we got some mics in front of our face, and it's just us goofing around. Mm -hmm. But some really good education. Yeah, we definitely yeah. lay it on the table. So what I've been doing in the last couple weeks is we've been just talking deal structuring. So I thought today uh, the part about how you turn it into offers is is basically real taking my deal structures or some of the numbers that we're always talking about and putting them in the real live situation. So mm -hmm. I have examples mm. of how you would make offers to people that have these situations, right? Which is what we've really been doing for the last couple of weeks because I know that uh, in the beginning when Peter and I started on the radio uh, in Connecticut and then we uh, went into doing our live meetings, it's all about the deal structure, mm -hmm. right? I mean, people are so... Uh, intrigued with the seven ways that we buy and sell property mm -hmm. right um but i think i think even more importantly than that uh i can't instill enough that honest to god it is so easy nowadays to get started right peter oh I yeah mean, i mean we talked about it last night in the meetup yeah. great information last night i mean not even a hundred dollars right so. Well, not not even at that point. <clears throat> just just to get to that point, I'm, mm -hmm. you know, Bill's explaining you you call for sale by owners. You, uh, you're going to sit there like, well, how do I find it for sale by owner? Oh wait, the websites. I mean, I actually did that to practice when I first right. started. I had like I got a script and uh, some names are going to come in. I got a call. I don't want to screw it up. What if mm -hmm. I get two names? Well, it's a lot more than that, but whatever you get, you're right. not sure. You don't want to screw up the first couple that come in. So I just started calling random people on the internet. Mm -hmm. And then with the third call, I made an appointment, called them up, and we went and looked at the house. Right. Like, holy exactly. cow. And the other thing, too, is I, I feel don't be afraid of screwing up. Just jump in. Right. Do it. Mess up. You learn so much from messing up. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, one of the things Bill pointed out you, you know, a couple of years ago when I started working with them, there's a process. Maybe it's 10, 12, 15 steps each step. Mm -hmm. So you think the first deal you're going to get to the end and make all your money the first time out? Like a racehorse doesn't make that kind of success. Right. So what if you get, like, four or five steps in the first time or three or four steps, well, you learn that much of the business, mm -hmm. a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. Good. Next time you get a little further, next time you get further, and eventually <clears> you get to the end. But don't expect to learn everything. Get it all straight the first time. If you do, right. call me. <laughs> That's a great success story. I'd right. like to be willing to learn. How about the girl at the meetup last night? She said she did eight, eight wholesale deals and hasn't closed one yet. Yeah. Right, right. That's exactly what we're talking about. It's completely normal. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, but you can start. and uh, So let's take a couple minutes and do that because yeah. uh, we're talking about what we did last night. So, But these people weren't here last night. They're here listening to us now, so let's do it now. Sure. So the couple things that I talked about, and I get very, very passionate about this because when I first started, mm -hmm. um, it took me a couple of years to get my first deal. I think it was 18 months before mm -hmm. I actually like really started getting my head wrapped around what to do. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the biggest reason, and, and, and anybody that does real estate or tries to become an investor has the same problem. I've noticed this. It's not just me. 
Um, what happens is, is there's so much information. Yeah. Right. You don't know what to do. You know, like I'd go to the RIA meeting, you know, and it's like, oh, this guy's got this course, and it's like, you know, seven hundred bucks or a thousand dollars, and I'd buy it, and I'd go yeah. home. And one thing about me, uh, my my wife. My rebuttal to my wife when she says to me, you bought another course. Now, it doesn't happen anymore mm-hmm. because I've been so successful with them, right? But, or I don't tell her. Which one is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when I go to the cigar shop, guy says, you want it? the girl says, I buy cigars. The girl says, you want a receipt? I'm like, hell no. My wife will find them suckers. Mm-hmm. She don't know how much <laughs> I pay for these cigars. <laughs> She's got the coffee, though. You could always oh, throw yeah, that back. Forget about the coffee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a banter. We are not going to bring up coffee, Naomi, oh. okay? Coffee and chocolate are not two things that we talk about in my house. They're just there. Off limits? They're off limits. Off limits. Yeah, off limits. Or Some arguments. My That's favorite argument. things. And Imagine you're that. Them? No, I'm not banning them. No, I just don't talk about it. We're them. not arguing about that. And we it's, just say, here's we, your coffee, sweetheart. Here's your chocolate. We Have concede. a good day. We yeah. concede. But mm-hmm. we expect the cigars. I need a vice. <laughs> Anyways, so um, <clears throat> I, I would, I would uh, you know, sometimes I would tell her I was charging things sometimes i wouldn't but it seemed like i would go to the ria i'd buy whatever course whatever guy was in town that Mm -hmm. week teaching whatever he was teaching whether it was a forms course or a website or you know how to do lease options or how to do subject to or getting the deed or whatever it was i bought it most of the time another piece of the puzzle exactly right (laughs) so uh so it seemed like i'd go to the ria meeting and i would buy that course and then i would like come home and i would study it for a month or two and then I would go back to the RIA meeting and I'd buy something else. Right. So what I realized after a while is is that every month I was in a different business. Yeah. Or every other month I was in a different business. Like this month I was studying wholesale deals. So I'm out looking for wholesale deals. And then somebody else would come to town and they'd be like, oh, well, how about doing it this way? Mm-hmm. And then I would be doing that. So you couldn't even get good at the first one. Exactly. Get it done and drop that and start another one. And then I realized uh, I, I, I kind of broke out of it because uh, I went to a Ron LeGrand seminar and I watched the Wolves uh, do a live uh, presentation on stage on how you talk to people. Mm. And the Wolves are the last name. They're not actual animals. Exactly, yeah. Okay. Lynette Just and Brian clarification Wolf. Clarification yeah, Thank case. you. <laughs> Brian and Lynette Wolf, who are fantastic people. I've bought their materials. Yeah. They are fantastic. Yeah. I think it's their, their website is The Wolf Couple. Uh, you can go there if you want, um, and, and they're they're great people. Mm-hmm. But I watched them on stage, and I'm thinking, no offense to Brian, but he was like on the phone trying to make a deal, and I'm thinking, holy crap, I could do that. I, matter of fact, I think I could do better than that. And I just I just made the decision that that's all I have to do mm. is just do that. And I came home, and I started putting my signs up. And I and I had a Pat Live number. We lived in an apartment. You remember the apartment we used to live in on uh, in Meriden on the lake? No. Oh, you remember that? No, I was never. You never invited me. Oh. Oh. That was because the landlords banned us from letting you come over. <laughs> How do you hear <laughs> I about? I had to me? buy my own house. <laughs> so my, 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 I had to my buy music. my own house so I can invite friends, <laughs> troubled friends like you. You know. My reputation precedes me, hey, man. Hey, the place that we used to live in back in the '40s was that the mob used to live there. <laughs> the guy that cut my hair down the street used to tell us there's a little balcony up on top. Yeah, he says, when I was a kid, he's like 80 years old. When I was a kid, I used to go by there, he says, and there was a guy with his feet up on there, and he had a machine gun. He goes, yeah, that's how they They only came certain times of the year. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty wild. It was a cool house. I tried buying it. She wanted 800000 for a $300,000 house. I couldn't do that. Uh. Yeah, I tried. I tried. I tried for a year. And how'd you come up with eight hundred thousand? No, that's what we were. It's what I want. Yeah, exactly. No, I'm it's, from, it's what I want. They were from New York, <laughs> and they they were used to high end houses. Anyway, so I was kind of struggling along, and then all of a sudden, I bought a subject to deal. It was my first deal, and uh, I bought it from a. Uh, there was a. Tw- I think he was twenty three, and there was two brothers, twenty three, and I think twenty one or twenty or something like that. Parents had passed away. And they had inherited the house, and they were living in the house. Okay, and um, what happened was, I went in the house, and they got, had, I think, sixteen or nineteen dogs in the basement. Oh, good lord! And it stunk <laughs> to high heaven. <laughs> so oh, I go lord. in, and there's these two guys, right? <laughs> have you heard the story? <laughs> no. I believe I might have heard it. Okay, so uh, everybody, tell it I tell it all the time. I tell it all the time. Yeah. So 
there's these two guys, and they're kind of on the couch, and it's kind of like a bachelor pad, you know, and I'm looking Worst around, I'm thinking, bachelor. oh, my God, right? And then all of a sudden, in, come, in through the door comes this beautiful, stunning-looking girl. I mean, she was young, but she was absolutely, like, model perfect. She walked in the room. She took my breath away. I'm like, who the hell is this, right? Well, the older brother, it was his girlfriend, and she wanted to live with him. But the dogs were no good, and the house was no good. So mm. we started, and she, and so we did. The, I did my whole presentation, which was like not even a presentation. I just spieled, or spewed. That's a word. I just <laughs> spewed. Blah, 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 blah. I don't even know what I said, <laughs> but it wasn't the right things because saying, I didn't close them. You, you keep you kept saying buy your house, blah blah blah. Yeah. buy your house, blah, yeah. blah, blah I can. Buy your house. How about if you do this? You know, all the 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 sales uh, words I shouldn't be using. We got all done. And he was like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't think I want to do that. And she looked at me and smiled, and she winked. Mm. She says, we need to talk about it, can we call you tomorrow? The magic happens. And I said, sure. <laughs> and he called tomorrow and said, can you come back and talk to us? I think I want to do the deal. <laughs> I don't know what she said to him. <laughs> I don't know what she promised him, yeah. dog. <laughs> but smelly, I bought the house. <laughs> dog smelly house, amazing girl. Yeah, and I don't know. She yes. was stunning. She was stunning. Uh, and I don't know what what she said. I don't know. I, I don't care. I bought the house. Uh, it needed obviously renovations. I mean, the floor mm -hmm. downstairs. I paid two guys to remove the four inch floor, and it took them two days. It cost me hundreds to get rid of that floor. And then we put enzymes down and we did a whole we worked on that floor the for a smell. week yeah it was horrible oh. yeah. so anyways what happened was um the guys are fixing the house i actually had a partner i partnered up with someone and he gave me the renovation money because i bought the house for no money i mean i i, I had conveyance tax which was like you know a thousand dollars or twelve hundred dollars or something mm -hmm. i bought the house for what they owed on it uh and took over the mortgage payment and that was it Right, and I got him to pay the first month worth of mortgage payment. So I had a whole month before I had to pay anything. So I took on a partner. He gave me money to renovate, and uh, we started renovating the house. And uh, Jay, you know, our buddy Jay was do mm -hmm. he was doing some of the renovations, and he was renovating the bathroom. And um, he had a scrap piece of plywood that I that I asked if I could have. He was going to throw it away, and he's like, "Yeah." So I took a spray can of paint that I had in my car. I had brought it for that reason, and I painted on it "House for Sale." Uh, by owner or something like that. And I nailed it to this tree. There was a four-foot tree out in the front, you know, four foot wide. I mean, it mm -hmm. was a huge oak tree, right? And I nailed it to the tree. And a few days later, some realtor called me up and said, uh, would you do a co-broke deal? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I really didn't know what that meant. But I'm like, yeah, sure. <laughs> well, let's sell the house. You know what I mean? And it's <laughs> like that. And she brought uh, uh, a person to the, to the table. Um, ironically enough, my wife was in the mortgage business. She was learning how to do mortgages. Mm -hmm. So we ended up selling the house to the guy, and she got him a mortgage. So we made money on the house, and she made money on the mortgage. I don't know how much she made on the mortgage. I never really figured that part out. Hmm. Um, oh, she didn't tell you, Bill? No. <laughs> <laughs> In my house, my money is our money, and her money is her money. You know how that goes. Not my house, uh, Bill. Sorry not about your that. house. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> You'll give my formula. You're lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oops. So uh, I made 68000 on my first deal. And uh, I, I don't know how to say this politely, but it's kind of like the first time you have sex, you never forget it. I mean, it's there's no other way to put it. Hmm. And when I looked at that check and I knew, and it had my name on it, it was like the first time I had sex. I will never forget that. I can see it right now. I, it's like I could see that, that check in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I haven't looked back. And I have used real estate to make a living with I have used I have had other jobs I had a sales job for five or six years and I traveled the country 40 weeks a year and I had Jesse who at the time was 19 years old I was still buying and selling a couple houses two three houses a year making I was making more money flipping my houses than I was doing my salary you know I was making 100 mm -hmm. 125,000 a year mm -hmm. you know I mean my salary not my bonuses but my salary mm -hmm. you know what I mean mm -hmm. and, and it was like amazing wow so um, 
I guess the reason why I'm telling my story today is because you all have stories. You have yours. We do, yeah. Peter has his. You know, we all mm-hmm. have our stories. And maybe we'll do that. The next couple of weeks you could tell your story, and then you could tell your story, and we'll just keep telling our story, right? And we'll, <coughs> we'll have some stories from the listeners. Yes. Yes. Listeners. The, the, amazing, the amazing thing about your story is how many people will wait 18 months to get paid. Right. Mm-hmm. So you, I really appreciate your stubbornness. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't. Totally. Yeah, you persevered. But the education you put into it, I think sometimes people buy one course and then they, they think, you know, oh, well, it's going to happen now. And right. no, it's a continued education. And it can be confusing, too, because sometimes the, there will be multiple words for the same type of deal. Right. And so you think, okay, you know, subject to, but oh, wait, no, it's also by this name or that name. And, right. And uh, so you need to figure that out. So I think the only thing that I have done uh, that's different. I mean, I didn't invent all this stuff, and a lot of it I learned mm-hmm. from people like Ron LeGrand and Richard Roop and Dan Duran and Willie Hooks, and you know, these are all coaches and stuff like that. And I spent a, I spent a fair amount of money on my coaching, <clears> but <throat> I think the part that the and, and back then that's what you did. Nowadays mm-hmm. with the internet and you know, like podcast, it wasn't stuff like this back then. I mean, this right. was ten years ago. It wasn't like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Ten, twelve years ago. Um, I, all I did was just compile all that information and put it into one system. And so after a while, what happened was as I started making offers and making offers. I mean, we were spending, I had a partner, and we were making money, so I was spending seven to $9,000 a month uh, in advertising. So I was getting a lot of leads. Mm-hmm. So I had an acquisition manager, and I had a sales manager, and we had an office, and we were, like, churning deals. So it, we started doing seven, eight deals a month, uh, you know, buying seven or eight deals a month, closing on three or four. Uh, and I just started noticing patterns because I was doing all the offers. You know, I had an acquisition. At first, I was doing all the offers myself, and then I started training an acquisition manager, mm-hmm. which is how we got to where we are because I started to, I had to start figuring out what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you learn a lot by teaching. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. 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 So. Um, how do I do that? Right. Oh, yeah. I have to Write teach it, it. I better figure it out. Right. Yeah. People ask questions, you got to answer them. Right. Yeah. So. Um, what I realized was that uh, what I did that I think is the two things that I'm known for is, is I put all I, I have seven offers and, and I have a mathematical way, which is with loan to value and how much equity they have on which offer to make one. Mm. So that's mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I created that. And the other thing is, is uh, what what people say when they're in the house. I mean, that's my forte is is the words and the presentation and how to handle how to make the offer. That's what I'm known for. Those two things are what I'm known for. Yeah, well, you have a, a very, very large sales background. Right. I mm-hmm. I almost do, but I had no training in sales. I just sold what I sold. You know. But you have a trained sales background, right. which a lot of people getting in real estate don't. Right. They just don't. They just yeah. start doing what they think they're doing. Because you're not just buying and selling sardines. You actually right. have to talk to people and, right. you know. Right. And the thing that I've done is, is I don't, I don't give you all the theory and the technology that goes behind it. I just say, well, say this. Like, for example, uh, a, a sentence that comes to mind is, so, Naomi, uh, if I don't buy your house today, what's going to happen? I'm going to not have a sold house. It's right. going to be a pain. Right. You're going to have to go look for another buyer, right? Yeah. 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 All that time. So I am right here. You realize I am a buyer? I realize that. Okay. So let me ask you this question. What would have to happen for me to buy your house today? If you could give me like maybe ten more thousand. Yeah. See, it's mm-hmm. it's it's that those couple of sentences <laughs> took me a year to figure that out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. But I'm, I'm telling you, she just made me the offer. That mm-hmm. happened yesterday with that house I was in. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were making offers, making offers, and I finally said, "What would have to happen for me to buy your house?" Yeah. Well, if you, I'm offering him twenty five hundred dollars for moving money. Yeah. He's like, "Give me five thousand, and the house is yours." We weren't that far away. Mm-hmm. And then I took it a step further because I broke down the numbers and I showed him that. He was being a little unrealistic, and my 2500 was a gift, and he actually got it. Mm-hmm. But at least we were on the same page. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? You just got, I'm, I had to leave because I had appointments, but uh, right. I missed the punchlines, but it, it was great. Yeah. I, know, I know how he does it, but it's always great to see. It is. Because I'll be standing there like, <clears throat> uh, you know. And I'm getting better at knowing what to say mm-hmm. in the lines, but mm-hmm. not always which one goes where, which one should I throw in right now. Right. So getting closer. But it's, it's masterful. All right, so let's uh, let's do a couple example deals here, okay? So enough of that chit-chat. Uh, so let's see here. We have a house um, that's free and clear. 
which is one of my favorite. Okay. You can do a lot with that. Yeah. Uh, and the so the seller has told us. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we diverted completely with my story. I want to I want to do this before I do do anything else. So I started by talking about last night with the meetup, how to get started. Yes. Mm -hmm. So the two things that I wanted to cover is the two easiest ways to get started. Like this deal that I'm going to talk about right mm -hmm. now, how do you find the deal? Mm -hmm. So the two easiest ways are uh, if you go to our website, flippinghouses.club forward slash FISBO script. FISBO stands for for sale by owner. FISBO script. You can download the script that you're using right mm -hmm. now. And you're using, I mean, we, we have software that does this, but you don't need software to get started. You're saying you call about four people and get one one, one, one lead. lead. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's not not one deal. It's a lead. It's a lead. Correct. Right. So. Correct. So sometimes you have to work it, but they express interest. Right. And if they're expressing interest, that can be worked It's with. a motivated seller you want exactly. to talk to them. It's better than talking to suspects. Exactly. Right? So. So if you download our script, it's uh, flipping houses forward slash flipping houses dot club forward slash Fizbo script. You can get the script, mm -hmm. and then just find like Peter said, type in your into Google your city in for sale by owners or Fizbos, mm -hmm. and you'll get websites that will have them. Mm -hmm. So you just call these people and you do the script, right? Okay, and they will talk to you because they are trying to sell the house. Right. So when you talk to them, they won't be mad that you called. They'll be glad you called, and then just do right. the script. Right. Uh, and then the other thing I talked about last night was uh, find who, wherever people, uh, I mean, whether it's Craigslist or newspaper or whatever, but find where people advertise apartments for rent, mm -hmm. <clears throat> right? And then just call those, call people up that are renting apartments and you say this. So uh, I'm calling about the apartment you have a rent. I have one question for you. What's that? They'll say, uh, will you rent to own? Mm -hmm. And if they say yes then go out and talk to them about a lease purchase, right? So you lease option it from them and then go find your buyer to lease option from you and you get in the middle. Mm -hmm. So suppose you do a lease option and the guy is looking for $2,000 down, right? And he wants $1,000 a month. Well, it's very possible you can find a buyer that will give you $5,000 down and pay you $1,200 a month. Right. I mean, it's not impossible, especially if they own it. Right. You know, it's not just a mm -hmm. rental at that point. It's they own it. Yeah. Right, so, so it's a completely different type of renter. Yeah, it's like a buyer. Yeah. yeah. So those are two ways that you can find some of these deals we're talking about. So I don't want there to be a mystery. I mean, there's a lot of other ways. We don't get all our deals that way. We do signs. We do direct mail. We do on mm -hmm. the phones. But you know, we're looking mm -hmm. to do between two and four deals a month. So that's a lot of activity. I have a quick question about the apartments. Mm -hmm. Are all apartments mm -hmm. for sale? I know condos can be because people have condos and they can't sell them, so they rent them, and then they can be sold again. Mm -hmm. Are all apartments uh, purchasable, or are some are just part of a, you know, an apartment building that they're not for sale? It doesn't matter. If you get a hold of the owner mm -hmm. and you're talking to the owner, I mean, the owner could be a burnt-out landlord. Yeah, they could, they could sell and one even, unit. Even if it's, you know one unit out of maybe four units mm -hmm. or five units. Yeah, I just don't know the laws, <coughs> to, it, it, if it's how it's set up. Oh, no, right, the laws don't that, matter. Yeah. That conversation. Yeah, maybe, I know condos are, you know, sell condos, but. <coughs> right, you know, let's talk about a master <coughs> lease option or something like that. Mm -hmm. They may be very interested because it's more than a property management company can do for them. Right. So. Okay. Let's let's take your a better example of what you're talking about. A person owns a three-family house. Mm-hmm. And they're trying to rent one of the fam one of the apartments mm -hmm. out of the three family house. Mm -hmm. So you're saying, can they just buy that apartment? In that case, I wouldn't think so. Okay, but if you call them up and say, "Would you sell me? Would you rent to own?" Mm -hmm. and the guy would be like, "No, it's a three family house." Okay, will you sell it to me? Mm. That's mm -hmm. all. Okay. It just opens the conversation, yep. and he says right. no, or he's like, "Well, what do you mean?" And then you just open a conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, right? Because like Naomi said, he could be a burnt out landlord. Mm -hmm. Right, my point is is that you don't have to be me mm -hmm. doing three four deals a month, and I don't feel like I'm anybody to be honest with you. I mean, I'd be happy doing ten or twelve deals a month, and then I feel like I'd be somebody. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I, I mean, we're just we're just grinding. Every month we're chasing the checkbook. I mean, it's not it's not a hard thing. I mean, when you got when like right now we have mortgages due in the next couple of weeks, and it's like okay, we need to get something done here. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> it's just a business, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 it makes money. Right. Yeah. It's funny because uh, I have this new thing going through my head. Let me see if I get it straight. Uh, a business is there to make you money. 
right? Mm. You sustain the money by using, no. And it sustains, the business is there to make money. I should write this down. The business is there to make money, and it sustains by using the money for your purpose. Oh. Yeah, that's it. <clears throat> A business is there to make money, and it sustains by using the money for your purpose. And what your is personal your purpose? purpose? Your personal purpose or the business purpose? Your personal purpose. Oh. Okay. It's a tool. Yeah. And if it's working, you'll make sure the business works. And if your mm -hmm. purpose is strong enough, like, I mean, I know one of my purposes is, is charity. Mm -hmm. I like to give money away. Mm -hmm. So I like to help. Uh, I like to help churches and things and Girl Scouts and Boy Scouts. And I, so, so my purpose is is to help the community. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you I just opened up a new charity? Is it nicknamed great. the Face? <laughs> <laughs> all right, good. So does that make sense? <clears throat> so all my point in 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 diverting here is that. You don't have to be us where you're doing three, four deals a month. That's good to aspire to that. That's really good. Well, you weren't that in the beginning. <clears throat> you buy one house. Yeah, nobody's that in the beginning. Right. And my point in my story is is that I went I went almost two years before I bought that house. But you don't have to do that. Honest to God, you don't have to do that mm -hmm. because <clears throat> if you just <clears throat> if you just follow our our podcast there's 72, 73 shows now, mm. right. and we talk about this all the time. Just go to my website. I mean, the website's a little confusing. We're re re revamping it as we speak. Um, but at least get involved somehow, some way. I mean, I have a couple courses that we sell that are $100, $200 courses. It cost me, it cost me the information that I sell for a few hundred dollars. It's stupid because it cost me 50, 60 grand to get. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's like undervalued. People think that because I'm only charging a couple hundred dollars. And the reason why I do that is because, Peter, you and I had talked about it for quite a while, is we want to help the working man. We want to help people like me when I first started. I didn't have a lot of money. I was, I right. was like, grinding through. I had a, a gas station, that, and I was t funding it from the gas station. Actually, one of my first uh, seminars that I went to cost $5,000, <clears> and I sold tools that I had and equipment that I had that was worth forty thousand dollars. I sold it for seven grand, so I can go to a seminar. Wow, forty thousand dollars worth of tools. That's commitment. Yeah, <coughs> but it's stuck. So uh, you're going to have to do the same thing. My philosophy is: is why not do a few deals and use that money to sustain the business? Mm -hmm. So the philosophy that I just did, and I have to articulate this, but a business is to make money, and it sustains if you spend the money on your purpose. Mm -hmm. So if your purpose, like our purpose in our business, the one when I say our business, I mean the, the house selling business, right. is we help sellers that can't sell their house. Mm -hmm. We help buyers that can't buy a house, and the community is a better community because of it. Mm. Right? So exactly. that's our purpose. Exactly. Right? So the point is is that it's not just about money to us. Right. You know, sometimes we do deals and help people do things, and we go outside of our parameters to help them. Yeah, and we do. Because we can. The kind of terms deal you're talking about uh, – People probably won't see that because right. they're not going to go by, oh, look at the construction going on because these are usually nice houses. Right. But think about the other times when we do like a rehab, people go, oh, flippers, like, like, like mm -hmm. they're trying to like make money out of nothing. Right. Well, what would have happened to that house if they didn't? The house would be sitting there as a disaster. Town's not collecting taxes because it's foreclosed and people abandoned it. Right. And people can't move in it. But when you do renovate it, well, you're hiring people to work. Home Depot's making money. Lowe's is making money. The painter's making money. The community's making money. The plumber's got a job right. down the list. You're, you're well, what about the work. deal we just closed on the other day? We were talking about it last night in Plainville. Right. Lady, 70-something yeah. years old. She had three adult children with their spouses living with her, and she couldn't shake them. She owed $22,000 in taxes, and nobody was giving her money. She had to sell the house because yeah. of the taxes, and the, she had a $6,000 water bill. She couldn't afford it. Yeah. And a $40,000 mortgage on a $300,000 house. But the sad house. thing about it were the children living with her, yeah. with their spouses, and wouldn't help a 70-year-old lady. Right. So, I mean, thank goodness she came across us. Right. You, you know, spoke with her and The thing is, that is that she couldn't even probably go to a realtor because... Because it wasn't they show ready. It would have never have it sold have went unless, the way it unless went. she... I'm telling you I work with her for three or four months. Myself and one of my students work with her for three or four months before she actually came around. And there's it. no way that a real... I don't think a realtor... I'd yeah. be surprised if a realtor would do that. Yeah. Because she even, needed a lot of attention. Yeah. A lot of attention. Yeah. 
But the other thing too, just to kind of go back to your point, uh, is also when you're doing a fix and flip, the impact that it has on that neighborhood, on that yeah. community. Um, I was actually speaking to a Yale student last week and they were concerned about, you know, the flippers and the, they're just in it for the money and just, you know, all these things. And, and it's kind of like, no, there's a social impact going on here too. Right. A lot of things are being improved by improving that one home and, and the impact that it has or people's lives. And anyway. Yeah, the problem is, is A&E makes it look like the guy that's a flipper is just all he does is he comes into the house, you know, he, he comes in yelling mm -hmm. and screaming. He doesn't do nothing. Right. I just had this in, problem with one of my contractors. Minutes. Yeah. In 30 minutes. In 30 minutes. Snaps his finger. In 30 minutes, he makes $40,000. 30 minutes. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, what a ripoff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. They're not including no. the weeks had, and weeks. I just had, weeks and, I just had yeah. this problem with my contractor yesterday. I was having a little uh, thing with him. And, and he's like, you walk in here at 4.30 in the afternoon and you got a cigar and you want to play boss? I'm like, no. really? Oh. oh, no. Really? Oh, no. Oh. You have no idea, dude. I blew oh. his head off. Emma's got a question. So uh, Bo is saying that his feed stuck, uh, stuck looping on will you rent to own. His what? So he, he's doing all of this, but he keeps get, getting stuck on the will you rent to own question. Okay. Do you understand you, what he's saying? Well, yeah, we missed yeah, the first I, I his understand. feed that you said something being his Yeah, feed? can you put the mic closer to your uh, cuz I can't hear you. The mic's not working. Oh. So, uh, say it again. He's, he's doing all of this, but he keeps getting to the question, will you rent to own and not getting past that point. Cuz they say no. <clears throat> you need to clear what's his name? Bo. Bo, you need to clarify. So you you ask, will you rent to own and what happens? Because I think I think I think I understand how to answer your question, but why don't you tell us so I can uh, answer it correctly? We're waiting for him to answer. Do we have a word from our sponsors in the meantime? I mean, we don't have any of those. You notice we, that? What? We don't have a sponsor. We're our own sponsor. Send them to our website. <laughs> I'm my own sponsor. I'm funding the whole thing. <laughs> so at this point, you know, maybe if people want to sponsor us, we could play a song or a <laughs> little commercial for the cigar shop or something like that. Who are you talking to? Emma. She wants me to sing? Emma. <laughs> I'll play you smoke and, and you tell stories. And do a screen share and play some video game, would you? Emma told us this morning some guy's making $180,000 a month doing playing video games and people are watching them. Yeah, we're all jealous. <clears throat> Did he answer? She answer? Did Bo answer? Okay, good. So we're going to carry on to, to the deal structuring, and then uh, if they answer, I'm just interrupt me, okay? So the deal that I want to work on this morning is a free and clear house that the seller will sell on owner financing or they'll lease it with us, okay? So here we go. Uh, it's a $200,000 home in excellent condition. Now that's that has a lot to do with it because it's a lot a pretty house. Yeah, a lot of a lot of a lot of these deals we talk about have to be pretty houses. Don't get that confused. Mm -hmm. If it's an ugly house, it automatically goes into deal number five or deal number six, which is number five is a rehab retail and number six is a wholesale. Okay, if you're paying cash, you use those formulas. Mm -hmm. If it's ugly, you're automatically going to pay cash. Mm -hmm. So don't get that confused. The rest of the deals are are terms deals. Mm -hmm. And a terms deal simply means that you are going to pay the owner down the road. He's going to give you a chance to pay him in full later. We call that a delayed cash out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's going to happen is, is they agree to get their money in full in five years or their money in full in three years or seven years or 10 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if we're going to agree to pay them down the road, what we do is we give them more money. We make it worth their while to wait. Mm -hmm. So we can't offer them 50 cents and a dollar and say, I'll pay you in five years. It doesn't work that way. Okay? So this house, uh, um, so after we go through our cost to sell worksheet <clears throat> and we ask them a bunch of questions, we determine that they're willing to take $185,000 on a $200,000 house. Mm -hmm. Okay? And they want $5,000 down and they're willing to take $800 a month in payments. Okay, and there's a whole strategy on how to do that and figure that out. That's that's for another day, but for today, let's just talk about that. So they're asking 185000 right, which we can pay them, 
Okay, we're going to give him five thousand dollars down, and we got eight hundred dollar a month payments. Now the magic is, is the payments are principal only payments; they're no interest. Mm -hmm. Right, because you paid them more than right. they would have gotten otherwise. Right. Yeah, because if they actually did a conventional deal on a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage, they probably would only net. It would probably cost them about twenty five or thirty thousand dollars to sell, mm -hmm. because of all the uh, because it costs between thirteen and fifteen percent to sell a house conventionally. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the way you break that down is is you got six percent for a uh, realtor or marketing. You know, either one. If you're not selling with a realtor, you're gonna have to spend six percent for marketing. Otherwise, you won't get enough people. Uh, you'll have three percent for a closing cost. You'll have three percent for negotiating. Mm -hmm. You know, like like uh, uh, yeah, negotiating. And then you'll have three to five percent for uh, repairs. And even if it's a pretty house, you're still going to repairs because the guy that comes in and does the inspection is going to find things wrong that you don't even know about yet. But don't worry, you don't have to do the repairs. Just give us another five thousand dollars off. Yes, exactly. Bribe money. It's the bribe money, right? So, <clears throat> so by us paying him one hundred eighty-five thousand, technically we're overpaying fifteen or twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, technically. Mm -hmm. All right. And if you had to pay the whole two hundred, would you? Yes, I would. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with principal. Principal only, only payments. payments. Yeah, because. My gosh. Yeah. So let, even. Let, let's let's talk about that for a second. So, uh, well, let's keep going. So, one hundred eighty-five thousand. So our offer is we pay them one hundred eighty-five thousand. We give them five thousand dollars down, and we agree to pay them eight hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about this for a second. What happens if you're sitting in a house, and the person agrees to this? Where do you get the five thousand dollars? Where do you get it? From, from you know the person that you bring in, mm -hmm. the buyer. Good. Or they're going to put down an option fee. Right. So Say it's a ten thousand dollars. So you can't fee. get stuck on that. That's what my point is. You right. can't get stuck on. I need to come up with five thousand mm -hmm. dollars because you don't need to do that. Mm -hmm. What you need to do is you need to flap your lips and be smart and be a dealologist. Mm -hmm. A dealologist is a person that's, that studies deals, and I don't mean like study deals like listen to what I have to say and Naomi mm -hmm. has to say and Pete has to say. You're studying it as, it as it progresses. Right. So you're studying the person sitting in front of you and their needs and their wants. Mm -hmm. Right? And keep asking questions. <coughs> uh, right. One of the first things I learned is I would get stuck. <coughs> Someone would say something, I'm not sure what the answer is. I'm not right. sure. Mm -hmm. And you, you just keep talking. Right. You mm -hmm. say, I'm not sure what to do with that if you have to. Can you tell me more? Right. Um, right. What else could you do? <coughs> what would you like me to do? Or right. why do you want to do that? that? Yeah. A lot of why and just, just keep Just keep yeah. talking, anything, and it, it, you'll just get more understanding, and you'll be mm -hmm. able to get someplace. Just keep going. Right. right. Tell them, like, I'm not sure what to do. Tell them what's going on. Just, like, help mm -hmm. me. <laughs> but just keep going. Right. Right. The key question is, is what would have to happen if I were, if, what would have to happen for me to buy your house today? Mm-hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and they'll make you an offer. I'm going to tell you, and Naomi. Mm -hmm. uh, well, you guys can say this more than I can. Almost all of my deals, they make the offer to me. Mm -hmm. All I do is just keep asking questions, and then and then you pop them with that question. When you say, "What would have to happen for me to buy your house today?" Mm -hmm. They'll make you an offer. Mm -hmm. May not be the offer you want. But it's but an offer. Offer. You're, you're talking. You're having that conversation. <coughs> and exactly. that's, that's part of the thing. If you can open the conversation. <coughs> right. I mean, Bill knows I've, you know, in the past have sometimes asked questions that I knew that they didn't know or I didn't know. Just simply to, to open that door to have a conversation. Right. right. But, They're just people. Yeah. Yeah. They're not monsters. And if they are, leave. <clears throat> All right. So 185000 is the offer five thousand dollars down, eight hundred dollars a month in a payment, interest free payments, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if you're really good, if you're really, 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 really good, tell them that you don't want to pay the first three months in payments, which gives you an opportunity to bring the house to the market. Mm -hmm. Okay, especially if you don't have the five thousand dollars, right? Because, like Naomi said, what's going to happen is, <clears throat> well, let's talk about how we sell the property. <clears throat> So we're going to sell the property for two ten, okay, and we're going to get a fifteen thousand dollar non refundable deposit. The way we're going to do that is the fifteen thousand actually goes towards the option, the uh, because we're going to lease the house with an option. Mm -hmm. That's how we're going to sell it. I didn't say that part. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going to sell the house with an option. So we're going to lease it to somebody for two years or three years. They're going to give us $15,000, which is going to be applied towards their option agreement, Mm -hmm. which is their down payment money. Mm-hmm. Okay, and toward the purchase, <clears throat> towards the purchase, they got to go to the bank someday, and they say, yeah, right. "I already paid fifteen. I only need this much more." Right, right. and it's non refundable because if they if they don't execute the option, they don't get the money back. Exactly, and they know that. Do you yeah. ever not apply it to the purchase? No, never. I don't. Well, yeah, the only time you don't apply it to the purchase is if they leave and forfeit the money. Right, that's the only time. Right. Okay, so. They're gonna so the buyer is gonna give us fifteen thousand dollars down, on a non refundable deposit. What are we gonna do with the fifteen grand? Five goes to the owner. Five thousand goes mm-hmm. to your seller. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. So there's where you get the five thousand. Mm-hmm. So you don't have to go beg, borrow, and steal. What you got to do is you got to tell your owner, "I'll give you eight hundred dollars a month. I need three months to find my buyer. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> when I find my buyer, I'll give you five thousand mm-hmm. dollars." There you See? go. So. Or if you have money, which is a mistake, you can say, I'll give you the $5,000 now, but I'll only give you the 5000 if you give me three months free rent. Wait, it's a mistake to have money? Yes. Please Naomi's confused. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like having money. Yeah? This is a mistake. Well, it's not just having it. point is, people with money... Um, Make sloppy deals. They'll mm-hmm. just, well, I can do that. And, right. you know, they have almost money to blow. Mm-hmm. So instead of making a really good, lean, fair deal, mm-hmm. like if you were poor, what would you do? Well, I'd really have to cut back a little. Well, cut back a little. You just make it more fair. Because mm-hmm. you know, <clears throat> you're finding people have problems. Right. You don't want to inherit their problems. Like the right. house we looked at yesterday, we went back and forth a few times, and I had to leave, and he'd be able to finish it. But it's like, right. well, do let's we just really? do our deal. This yeah. It works for me this way, us this way. Mm-hmm. If he wants that, well, that doesn't work for us. Why would I take your problems? I don't get enough of my own. Exactly. Yeah. So you just present it, and then you go back and forth to show him, well, this is fair if you look yeah. at it. Cause, yeah, that's, that's good advice, Pete. That's, exact, yeah. that's great advice. Yeah, you don't want to inherit the problem. So it's <laughs> not necessarily not having money, <clears throat> but it's having the mindset of... You know, I'm not going, you know, that sharp mindset, right. making it lean. Yeah, when you have so. money, if you have money, then you'll make deals that are not as crisp as they should be. So how do you prevent that? I mean, you know, you get rolling, you have a good escrow of cash. How do you keep yourself sharp and lean? It's, it's not like, I mean, otherwise, what's what's the point? You know, you have, you have funds, and right. but how do you keep yourself sharp like it's that? It's almost impossible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Is that why you gave all of your money away to charity? I do that. Yeah. <laughs> I definitely do that. I've talked to people, and I, I call, you know, can I come see your house? Yep, yep, yep. And uh, they're like older guys. Yeah. I see. A, uh, I had a rash of this a few months ago. Um, and they um, they bought one house at a time. They put 20% down, mm-hmm. and they got a loan from the bank for the rest. And, you know, the rents kind of covered it. Mm-hmm. And then once they got that kind of going, then a few years later, they bought another one. Mm-hmm. And by the time they were retirement age, they had five. Right. And by now they were paid off, yeah. and they're hanging on for dear life. But going in, you're putting down $20,000 in a house <clears> and <throat> probably fixing it a little bit to make a two $300 cash flow a month. To me, that's not good math. No. Put in 20 no. get out two. In the long run, fine. If you just have the money, you've got to put it somewhere. Maybe right. that's okay. But to, to spend 20000 to make 200 a month, eh. That's, what, 2%? Yeah. Zero Right. Yeah. Ideal an, an ideal program is whatever you're spending, it's it's funding itself. Right. Right. Yeah. It's paying itself, and the way this is leveraged is amazing. Mm-hmm. But and everybody comes out well in the end. That's the crazy right. part. Part of the thing, one of the things I like to say is the normal way to buy and sell a house. It's a realtor, and somebody comes in and just, just sorry, there's just the buyer and the seller, and they can only dick around the price and haggle over who gets what, and they have to you know like two dogs on right. a bone. But when we do it with terms, there's a third person called the tenant buyer, the lease option buyer, who's living there for a while. Mm-hmm. Instead of blowing rent, he's happy to have some place where he can spend some rent and know he's going to get the house. Right. He's willing to give a little more. Right. Who gets a little more? Some goes to the owner and some goes to us, the original mm-hmm. seller and us, because there's three of us working the deal. So you're not battling with some guy yep. you know, over, over the bone. Right. You know, there's a third part to the wheel. You say that quite often. I haven't quite figured that out. I, I know it makes sense to you, but <laughs> the third part to yeah, the, the wheel. The third part to the wheel. Yeah, I don't understand that. But okay, so let's continue. So two hundred. So we sell for two hundred ten thousand. 
Net net fifteen thousand dollar non refundable mm-hmm. deposit, and we're going to get fifteen hundred a month in the rent. Mm-hmm. Because, quite honestly, if you bought a two hundred thousand dollar house, how much would it cost you to get a mortgage at four or five percent? <clears throat> Be fifteen hundred, yeah, about 14, with the 15. taxes and yeah. insurance and all that stuff mm-hmm. involved. It'd be fourteen, fifteen hundred. Okay, so let's break this down. So we're selling for uh, two ten, and we had uh, we bought for one eighty five, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So that means that we have uh, how much money there? We have okay twenty five thousand. Twenty five thousand, and then plus the monthly cash flow, right? right. So we have twenty five thousand. So the difference between fifteen hundred and eight hundred is seven. Yep. So seven times. Where is well, our calculator? Not yet. No. Not yet. Did you take the the uh, expenses off yet? Yeah. So we have to we have to take the taxes and insurance. Taxes. So let's just say it's, get too greedy. Let's just say it's four hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, so that leaves you three hundred <clears throat> monthly cash flow. You're saying four hundred dollars. Uh, four hundred pro- positive cash flow. Oh, okay. 300 for taxes and insurance. Yeah, yeah. depending on where you are. Yeah. Right? So, um, <clears throat> just for mathematical reasons, that's 5000 a year. Mm hmm. Okay? So we got 25000 already, right? Right. If we go five years at $4,800 or $5,000 a year, how much is that? Another 25000 25, so, like so up to 50000 yeah. Okay? Now, here comes the magical part. All right? So, how much is 800 times 60 months? Oh, 48, that's not 000. fair without it. Okay. 40, 40, right. 48,000. Yeah. 48. You with me? I'm with so you. So six yeah. times eight is 48, right? Yes. And that's so, what you paid the seller. So we we paid, because we have paid the payments of $800, right? Mm-hmm. They're principal-only payments, mm. right? There's no interest. So, right. You're actually So we had more. principal reduction. Right. So now our tenant who pays the fifteen hundred dollars in rent mm-hmm. gets use of the property, not mm-hmm. principal reduction. He just gets use of the property. Yeah. And every time he pays us the fifteen hundred, we reduce our principal that we owe our seller by eight hundred dollars. So you're actually making close to a hundred thousand. So we got from let's do it again. Let's break it down. So we bought for one eighty five. Mm-hmm. We sold for two hundred. Two ten. Uh two ten, I'm sorry. So that's twenty five thousand mm-hmm. dollars spread. Okay, we made uh, uh, four four hundred dollars a month in cash flow. Yeah. So that's another. If we did it for five years, that's another twenty five thousand. So that's fifty thousand. Mm-hmm. And then we had forty eight thousand dollars worth of principal reduction. We made ninety eight thousand dollars in five years for paying full price. For paying the full price. Yeah. And a little bit more than full price. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> oh yeah, that's good. That's Yeah, you think it's done? No. There's another profit in there we forgot about. Wow. What? What's left? Could you uh <laughs> Really? What's could, left? Could you approach the That's owner? That's 123. <laughs> uh, oh, you, could you approach the owner a few years later and um you could negotiate do a, you something could, else? You could you could do that. I don't in in this particular case I don't do that on first mortgages. I'll do that on second mortgages. Okay. So you're talking about going back to the owner and offering them less money for the for the note. Right. Maybe buy them out a little bit sooner yeah. or if they you Wait could longer. do that. That's not what I was thinking of. You could do that. Okay. I, I, I try not to do that on forced mortgages, but on second mortgages, I definitely do that. So what's the other profit center? Do you put <clears> laundry <throat> machines with coins? <laughs> See, <laughs> this is what happens when you think too much. It's right in front of your face. you got to be observant. I'm telling you, we were talking about this in the meetup last night. Okay. We, you guys, I, sho- I think I shocked you probably more than anything else. Peter, too. And I said, I don't want to look at the deals until I walk five minutes before I walk in the house. Well, that make, finally makes sense. Yeah. We're having lunch, and I have the sheet. I'm the guy. Like, and you know, I, I call a guy, get some data, and I send mm-hmm. it to Bill so he can get some more data, right? Instead of getting more data, he asks me two questions. Okay, we'll go look at it. That's it? And then I give him the piece of paper, and he's eating a sandwich. And he's just leaving it there on the way out. He goes, oh, yeah, give me that on the way out. Yeah. And he's looking at it in the car. Like yeah, so, so. So we're we're at, we're in the restaurant and, and he calls me. And questions. I'm on my phone. Emma's sending me pictures of backgrounds of videos, and we're talking about the backgrounds of the videos. We're not talking about the deal. We're talking about the videos that Emma's making, mm-hmm. right? <laughs> and he's like, "Okay." So I pick the sheet up and I'm 
get in the car and I put it on my steering wheel and I look at it. I call him. He's driving in front of me. I call him in front of him. I ask him two questions. I say, okay, good. Bye. Doesn't worry me at all because he, he jams like a like Keith Richards. You know, it's just he just hits it. He just knows what he's The doing. reason yeah. why is because I don't want to have a preconceived idea of the deal when I go in the house. Yeah. I want to have I want to use all my observation skills and I want to be able to make the deal the best deal possible based on what the person's telling me directly mm-hmm. themselves. Because how do I know that Peter didn't ask a question and interpreted it and yeah. wrote down on a piece of paper something different. And well, believe me, Peter's done that. Oh yeah. And believe Moi? me, my wife Moi? has done that. And well, believe not, me, other people have done that. Not only that, but the, the seller represents things differently on the phone. Right. They don't know you. Right. So they're saying, oh, yeah, it's I'm not so motivated. I can wait. And then once they see you and they establish a relationship. Or the, or the opposite. He was telling me, I'm motivated. He actually right. said, I'm motivated. Right. right. And then when he gets the house, like that is motivated. I want all this money. That's motivated. You know, they right. could do that too. The opposite. Right. So don't For be, the right price. Don't be right. surprised. I have a new definition of motivated. Need to sell. Right. Yeah. Need to, because you know that some of the new guys like, oh, this guy is really motivated. Like, oh, I really want to sell my house. Yeah. For full price. That's not the way we're talking about. Right. Anyway. Yeah. I've had a lot of coaching clients like that. They'll tell me this guy's really motivated, and I call him and I say, yeah, yeah. Well, they're asking one hundred ninety nine thousand dollars for one hundred eighty thousand dollars house. Of course, they're motivated. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're motivated to get what their number. Yeah. You know, and they're excited yeah. about it, and they're enthusiastic about it, and yeah, no, that's not happening. Yeah. Right. So. So we don't know where the other profit center is. Well, if the guy doesn't uh, perform on the um, on his option and make the purchase, you you would have to do the deal again. Nope. Oh, darn! It's the money now, money monthly, money later. What's left? <laughs> Past, present, future. Okay, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a hint. Yes, I'll give you a hint. Okay. When are we gonna make our first payment? Oh. Oh, Three well, yeah, later. yeah. We we we. Can so, what happens if we find a tenant buyer the first month? Ah, we made a little extra money. So we got three months worth of payments, yeah. right? Yeah. So three months worth of payments at fifteen hundred is how much? Yeah, that's uh, forty four. Forty five hundred. Yeah. Does anybody ever say we already got a, a a guy in there? Can't you start paying me now? Did anybody do that? Do that? No, but if they did, you give them the money. Okay. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, because if they did, I'd feel bad if I didn't. <laughs> okay. Well, you're going to spend money, marketing money and stuff, so you're going to just get a... Mm-hmm. Or what happens if you get them on the second month? Hmm? What happens if you get them on the second month? So then hmm? there's 3000 But either way, they just about covered, even if it was only 3000 they just about covered that 5000 Right. So. So, I think, I think, think? I think oh, you're by thinking too God... Much. You're thinking right. too much. I think by God we got a $100,000 deal here. Mm-hmm. By Jove. By Jove. Right. The funny thing about it is it doesn't come in all at once. No. Nope. But what if you made one of these deals and you put $10,000 in your pocket, and then you did another deal a month or two later, put another 10000 and then the cash flow starts coming in. And the heck with that. The, the heck with that. Let's even be even more conservative than that. Suppose you did one of these a year. Mm. What would that do to your retirement account? Well, mm-hmm. I've got one of these. It's mm. just a small condo. Yeah. It's, you know, I won't do the whole story, but I got it for 50 and I'm doing $400 principal reduction payments every month. Mm. And it's worth seventy five. Yeah, it's like yeah, seventy seventy five. Mm-hmm. It you know needs a little rehab and all that. So I think I got about ten thousand equity. I think it was worth sixty one. I got it. Right. But when I'm done with it down the road, I'll just either keep it yep. or s- rehab it and sell it. But ten years down the road, I own it, yep. mm-hmm. and that's perfect. When I'm like you know ten years down the road, or in five years I sell it and pull the money, whatever I want to do. Yeah. But I got one of those. Yeah. And it was uh, the guy said yes to everything I said. It wasn't hard. Yeah. Uh, if you do enough phone calls, you'll find that guy. Absolutely. If you're better, like Bill, you want to do as many phone calls to find that guy. Mm-hmm. But I wasn't that good, and I did it. And uh, he came in, and the last the last call, mm-hmm. he just wanted to make sure my numbers are right, the paperwork yeah. was right. And he, Bill actually had to shut me up just to finish the deal. Yeah, we're sitting at Dunkin' Donuts. Ah! We're sitting at Dunkin' Donuts, right? And Peter's going, I'm trying to do all the steps in I said, I put my hand up. I said, hey, Pete, hang on a second. I said, I think you've talked to Peter like three or four times now. You're probably ready for our offer, right? He goes, yes. <laughs> I said, we're going to do ba 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 ba. He said, okay. I said, do you want to know how we're going to close? Yes. Okay, you need to meet the attorney on this day. Okay. And that was what it was. 
Yeah. You were nervous. He was, he was talking, nervous. Well, no. Just the hell with that. He was talking past the clothes. Yeah. No, my problem at that time, I'm, I'm working on it, was mm-hmm. if I'm not sure how to fix a no, which is an objection, mm-hmm. a stall resist, if I'm not sure how, I try to just do everything I can so I handle anything before I get to the end where he could say no because mm-hmm. I don't have it, hadn't have it worked out. And we're going to work on some, some of that. So if something goes meh, I don't get stuck. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, I just keep making sure I got it all straight. It takes me an hour, then it'll go yeah. That's not so, a great way to you, do, but that's my safety. That's my safety net. But he was easy. That just that's just you know. Right. I don't know so what, were, how better to do. Were you it. bringing up the objections for him before no. he brought them up? Um, I don't know. I was just I was just making sure you were covering all. of I all was of explaining bases. how it works so that he would understand and not worry about stuff uh-huh. or have you know whatever. I just I was just trying to be careful because right. I wasn't good enough to not worry about whatever happens. Sure. If, no, it doesn't matter what he hears. Sure. We'll just have, he has a handle already worked out. Yeah. I didn't, so I was going longer. But I'm trying to get that shorter and just go to yeah. the punchline. I've learned a lot since then. Um, I won't get into it yeah, now. You were but thinking too much. Well, I was just being careful. I wasn't sure what I was doing. You know, How do you I drive know. when you're first driving? You're going slow. You know? you're not yeah. like, Both hands on the wheel. Yeah. Ten years Qu- later, it's one, one, one So I heard something one. the other day that's very interesting. <laughs> yeah. It's very interesting. We have to close out with this. Let's, let's hear, hear. The hear. definition of conservatism. Okay. Analytical fear. Paralysis by analysis. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> conservatism is analytical fear. Mm-hmm. So I that, see that. that that's, what, that's what that was. Mm-hmm. It was just analytical fear. Mm-hmm. He's yeah, like, he's I don't, like trying not... to justify what to say. Right. Because he doesn't know what to say. Yeah. No, I was just being careful. I didn't know. I, I wasn't good enough at it to just be cavalier about it. Right. I was just being careful. So it took me a little longer. And I would miss things like I, I should shut up and go for it now. I, you know, I was in the, as observant. I was like one of the first ones I pretty much did by myself until he showed up at the end to just wrap just, it up. So it worked, though. Good. And the point is it's good to have a mentor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, which is, um, I think, invaluable that yeah. yeah. you mentor people. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. So how was that deal? We made a hundred grand this morning. Yeah. <clears throat> so I want you to know that, honest to goodness, I promise you, with all my ability, that if you just find some for sale by owners, you could find this person. Mm-hmm. Now, are you going to buy five houses a month? Are you going to make a million dollars doing this? I don't think so. But you're going to make one deal, mm-hmm. and in most cases, that's all people need is just one deal. So just get on the damn phone, use the script. I'm giving you the script for nothing, for mm-hmm. God's sake. But, Bill, what if people don't know what to do then? Because they're not trained on the rest of this, <clears throat> the, the steps. We can help them. I have coaching. I have other things. Once they get a deal and they have some money in the pipeline, they can afford to get some training. Mm-hmm. And it's not expensive. My stuff is not expensive. I think that's part of what my problem is. I was talking to Emma this morning. We're doing all this stuff, and it's like, where's, you know, we we need I need to concentrate on houses, not the training. Mm. And I think I was told by a high power coach one time, I was doing some coaching one time or interviewing for some coaching, and he point blank told me that if you don't charge fifteen to twenty thousand dollars for coaching, you will get people that don't know how to get coached and they will fail and you won't have a good program. If people don't pay for it, there won't there won't be any value to it. And I'm beginning to believe that because some of the stuff we, I mean, the stuff we talk about on the show for free is better than what some coaches give. Mm-hmm. I mean, just what we're talking about, just our daily lives right? is what people charge $20,000 for. And we give it away for free. Well, the first people that came to your meetings were people from those programs yep. and had spent the money. Spent and thirty and forty thousand dollars. Did not have a house. And they they did spent, not have a house. And mm-hmm. they have bought houses with. And the me. program was done. Right. Like I went through it, he, I had more coaching, yeah. and I'm done. Yeah. And it was over. And then they come to you, and they started buying houses. Yeah. Eighty five percent of my coaching clients, my personal coaching clients, which is not many. I only I don't do more than twenty. I've got fifteen or eighteen of them. I'm looking for a few right now. Right. Eighty five percent of them are doing a deal. I mean, Naomi, you're on the calls. Yeah. Right. Yeah, they're doing deals. They're doing yeah. deals. <clears throat> you know? They finished deals and they got the money. I, I got a voice message yesterday. I should play it for you for one of my coaching clients. Hmm. And he just, he, he he bought a house, right? 
He hired a contractor, and he called me. He's only had the house like a week, and he's calling to tell me that they're putting siding on the house. They've already ripped out the kitchen. They've already done this. They ordered that. They ordered the windows. They did this. And he says, Bill, I was thinking this morning when I woke up, there is no way this would have ever happened without you. I just wanted to call and say thank you. This is so awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's really powerful. And that, and that, that. If you if you don't understand why I do it because of a story like that, then then you will never understand it. And that's why I do what I. That's why I'm on this podcast. I mean, we get paid nothing to do this. We get no. We don't have advertisers. We have nothing. Mm-hmm. This is our volunteer time. We we we're the three of us are here for nothing to help right. you. We don't get anything out of this. To give back. Yeah. Yeah. So. All I beg you to do is to pick up the phone, go to go to flippinghouses.club forward slash Fizbo scripts, get a script, call some for sale by owners, and try one of these deals. Mm-hmm. Okay? And, and my two cents is don't worry about doing a good job. <clears throat> do a lousy just job. do something. Mm-hmm. Blow a few. Waste a few. Just practice. Just do it. Put your fingers on the strings yeah. and screw it up. But just, yeah. just practice. And don't even try to buy the house. Just practice. Follow yeah. the magic formula. This is a natural law in life. Yeah. You ready? Yep. Quantity, quality, viability. Mm-hmm. So do your quantity first. Mm-hmm. Then work on your message and your in your quality. Mm-hmm. And then you'll have viability. Mm-hmm. Right? Quantity, quality, viability. Mm-hmm. Just get the quantity first. Just get some numbers. Get mm-hmm. going. Just do it. Well, if you do enough, you will find a good deal, even if you suck. Yeah, right. even if you're not trying. It's just right. you're going to get that one person that's like, oh, you right. want to buy my house? Right. You know, and they're just, you know. Right. Doesn't matter. And before we uh, go off, did Bo respond? So, okay, so uh, I'm sorry that we didn't understand the question. So uh, they can always put it in there. I can, I can later on answer the question. Mm-hmm. Well, he has to be doing the script carefully and um, enough people. I mean, it's a it's a volume. Actually, I think we covered it, Bo. If you're still listening, uh, I think we covered it, and the answer was just what we were talking about. Um, that if you're if you're posing the question, uh, will you rent? Will you? Uh, what was the question then? Will you rent, will you rent to, to own? own? Will you rent to own? Um, it's having it's knowing the right objection, stall, and resistance, and we just talked about that mm-hmm. for the last ten minutes about about having the right pers- persuasive answers, and I don't mean persuasive like you're gonna like trick somebody, but you have the right answer, and everything we just talked about is like just keep communicating until until mm-hmm. you find out what their problem is so you can help them. Right. You know, and that's he, that's the end result. Can he hear some of your calls? Mm-hmm. No, not Anywhere? without not without being in the coaching. Right, group, and I yeah. think maybe to add to his question and i think he's looking possibly for benefits <clears throat> for the seller right and he's not sure what those benefits are right and just to throw a few of them out there you know there's no real estate agent fees they um you know there could be tax advantages you know it depends on the situation but um right so yeah. bo if you're still there just type if you type into uh the facebook group that you still want help, I will do a consult with you. I'll do a half an hour consult with you, and uh, we can figure out what you need. Okay, just just type it in there, and we'll figure out how we could Skype or do a phone call or something like that. Okay, mm-hmm. how's that? That's pretty ballsy, huh? Wow. <laughs> so you only get one a week. Yeah. <laughs> one a win, week. A, win a free call with Bill this week. Yeah. We should do that every week. <clears throat> Bill gets somebody gets to talk to you for half an hour. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I'm giving you away. Yeah, I noticed that. We just got done talking do about it. value, what my value was, and you just like threw it under the bus. Okay, Naomi and I will take the one call each a week. Uh, hang somebody. on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take three All calls right, a week. <laughs> All right, we're going to close out. So uh, we're going to jump over to the Flipping Houses Finding Deals. So if you're on Facebook, you can go to Flipping Houses for Rookies Finding Deals. Uh, it's a closed Facebook group that's a membership site, and we go in there and we ask, uh, we answer specific questions, and we do a little bit of coaching, and we help you find deals. That's where we show you how, uh, that's where all the specifics are on how to actually find a deal, mm-hmm. uh, some of the other marketing techniques and stuff. Okay, so we're going to go over there. So if you want to catch us over there, that's where you would go. And uh, until then, go make some phone calls and make some deals, and let's rock and roll. Over and out. Over and out.
Thanks for tuning in to the hottest real estate topics on the planet with Bill and Pete. If you want to continue learning how to buy and sell real estate without money or credit, head over to FlippingHouses.club for some cutting-edge real estate wealth tools. Or contact us at info at FlippingHouses.club.